A motor encoder, also known as a rotation sensor, is the built-in sensor that tells your robot exactly how far each of its motors have rotated. Today's video is all about teaching you how to make the most of these new style motor encoders and use them in your very own Mindstorms projects. What is hopping everyone? It's Kyle here again with yet another video for the Builder Dude 35 community. A community that's all about teaching you everything you ever needed to know about LEGO Mindstorms. And as you've already heard, today's video is all about mastering the new style Robot Inventor motor encoders. And if you have managed to get your hands on these Robot Inventor motors already, you may have noticed that they all come with this set of indicators printed on the motor, where there's one indicator printed on the glide wheel and one printed on the motor's chassis. And this is super important to note because we're dealing with a completely different style of motor encoder than we've seen before. The Robot Inventor motors have absolute motor encoders, which is different from the EV3's relative motor encoders. Having an absolute motor encoder will mean that this motor always recognizes the position where these two indicators line up as the zero position. Now I have my robot connected to my smart device, which is an Apple iPad, and I have a project open and I'm ready to start demonstrating the functionality of these motor encoders. By the way, if you need help setting any of that up, check out this video here, which is a getting started guide for Robot Inventor. Anyway, with the new project opened up and ready to go, click in the top right corner to open the port view mode. And there you'll see the readout of all of the data on the current connected hardware to the robot. And I have three motors connected right now. If we click on one of the motors, it opens a drop down menu, which lets us choose between four different operating modes of the motor. So by default, it is in position mode, which gives you the position reference at that zero mark that I told you about before. So when you get these two indicators to line up, that reads as zero degrees, and it's always read relative to there. Then you can click on relative position. When you select relative position, the encoder measures motor position relative to wherever it first started, and that's called the zero degree position. And this is most similar to what we had back in the EV3. So this is going to integrate the motor's position over time to give you the total accumulated angle. So if you keep turning the motor, it'll keep going and going and going. And this mode is more similar to what we saw with the EV3's relative motor encoders. If you're going to use odometry as a strategy for your FLL robot to measure distances, I recommend checking out this old video that I have here. That video is a million years old, but if you use this operating mode on the port view, then you can use all the techniques I showcase there. The next two modes are something new that we have out of the box from a LEGO solution. The first one of those is speed, which tells you as a percentage from 0 to 100% how fast the motor is rotating. So if you give the motor a hearty tug, you're going to get a higher speed percentage. I also have a tutorial that teaches you how to do this with the old school EV3 brick. And last but not least is the power mode, which tells you the current power setting that the motor is applying when it is running. It's at 0% now because the motor is not on, of course, but when it's running, you can actually see a readout of what power the motor is applying. I'm ready to start showing you some programs that we can use to demonstrate the functionality of these motor encoders. The first thing I want to talk about is resetting the motor to its zero position. Remember what I was saying before about how this motor has absolute motor encoders? That means that no matter where the motor turns on, it always recognizes zero in the same place, and you can always reset the motor to go back to that zero position no matter where it is currently. So what we can do is we can go into this blue motors tab and select this block which is going to reset the motor to your desired position. So you could choose a motor port. I'm going to use port B because that's where my auxiliary motor is connected. And you can choose to have the motor take the shortest path to position X, or you can also choose clockwise or counterclockwise, which uh, the, the latter of those two dictate which direction the motor needs to turn. And you can set a target position anywhere between zero to 359 degrees. And then it wraps around again back to zero. So zero is the default, and that is the position where the indicators on the glide wheel and the motor chassis line up. I'm just gonna keep that there, and let's run this program and demonstrate and see what happens. So as you can see, exactly what we'd expect using the absolute motor encoders, the robot is able to find the zero position no matter where the motor started. And I can even go ahead and expand this. This of course works for every attached motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just drag this out for every motor on my robot. So one for motor A, one for motor C, which are the two drive motors. And we'll just see what that looks like. 
Now that of course is a really cool feature and there are a lot of amazing things that you can do with it. But another feature I'm really excited about is the ability to set the robot to drive a specific distance, which is really useful for competition robots. So to demonstrate this, we're going to spend some time in the pink movement tab. So what we're gonna do is we first want to set movement speed to some number. I'm gonna set it to 30% and I'll explain why in just a moment. And then we need another movement block. In my robot, the movement motors are A and C. That's just the way I have it set up. Of course, configure it however your robot is configured. And then the last piece of this puzzle is where the cool part comes in, is we can actually tell the robot to drive a specific distance forward, a linear distance that you can measure in centimeters. So the way that you do that is you just very simply take out this block. So have the robot drive forward for some amount of centimeters. And I'm gonna type in 20 centimeters. Now I'm gonna download this program onto the robot and run it and demonstrate it. And you can see that this is actually pretty accurate. When you program your motor to drive forward 20 centimeters, it actually drives 20 linear centimeters on the ground, which is super useful. The last time I saw this feature, I think was in the NXT, but it was horrendously inaccurate. So it's great to see that this feature actually works reasonably well and you can use it for a competition robot. Of course, however, this comes with two obvious caveats. The first is if you're running the motor at a really high power. So if you set the movement speed to something close to 100%, you're going to run the risk of having some wheel spin. That is the drive wheels are going to slip and now your distance measurement is not accurate anymore. So that's why I recommend using low to intermediate power levels. And that's why I chose 30%. The second caveat is that if you change the wheels to anything other than the ones included in the robot package, the distance measurement is also not going to be accurate. That's because if you put a taller set of wheels on like the ones I'm showing here, the robot is going to travel more distance in one rotation. Or if you put a shorter set of wheels on, the robot will travel less distance in one rotation. So what that means is you need to recalibrate the conversion between one motor rotation and how much distance that translates to in centimeters. And you can actually do that in the program and I'll show you how to do that right now. Again, we're going to go into the movement tab and we can see the last block here says set one motor rotation to X amount of centimeters moved. And you have, you have the option of bald eagle units if you wanna use it, but I'll stay in centimeters. And by default, it's 17.5, which is the calibration used for the stock robot inventor wheels. However, if you wanted to use a different set of wheels, you could actually calculate what this number is and replace 17.5 with that number. And it actually requires only very simple geometry. So if you can measure the diameter of your new wheel, multiply that by pi, about 3.14, that will give you the new distance traveled per one motor rotation. And the nice thing is most Lego wheels actually have their diameter printed in either centimeters or millimeters on their sidewall. So you could just read off that measurement, multiply that by pi and get the new value that you need to plug in here. So in my case, these taller wheels that I'm using are roughly 62 millimeters tall. So if you convert that to centimeters and multiply by 3.14, that comes out to roughly 19 0.6 centimeters moved in one rotation, which you can see is a little bit more. And once I've updated this value now, I can run the program again, and we can see that even with the taller wheels now, the robot's distance function is much more accurate, and the robot is now driving 20 centimeters forward again. How do you plan to use these motor encoders in your own Mindstorms projects? I'd love to learn more and drop a comment in the section below to let me know what you've got planned. While you're on your way there, make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned every week for more videos. Thanks so much for watching.